Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Riccioli with you. Jessica Lisi is with us as well. This is the match in review. Forge FC with a 2-0 win at home over York United, clinching a playoff spot, still plenty to play for. This one was, it was a funny game. It wasn't the start that Forge wanted, and it wasn't until the second half that they really got going, I thought. Yeah, this was definitely a game of two halves. You know, first half, Forge came out, they looked a little slow, it was a little sluggish. York definitely looked like they wanted it more, especially within that first 20 minutes or so. Um, as the match went on, obviously they came out second half. Um, they were able to, to bury two goals off those set pieces, mm -hmm. but their energy was a lot better within that second half. So yeah, definitely definitely a tale of two halves, I, I would say. Yeah, and it, it's and also two teams playing for different things. So Forge had something to play for. Right. York, a little maybe more loose. Uh, they had already been eliminated from the playoffs, more so playing for pride. They looked like a team playing a little more loose. I know one thing, um, Forge coach uh, Bobby Smirniotis, who we'll hear from shortly. Uh, we're also going to hear from uh, Malik Olawabi Bellawu, who scored his first ever pro goal here in the CPL. And we're also going to hear from David Chouanier, who played his uh, 100th match today. But um, Bobby likes them going forward. You hear him yelling it. You can hear it on the broadcast. Forward, forward, forward. He always wants to go forward. But Forge was doing a lot of kind of stop, turn, back to the defense, and trying to play out the back and a little slower. And that's not how Forge plays. You wonder if that's a club that was just a little more, um, didn't want to make a mistake, maybe playing the careful pass by going backwards. And so maybe that reflects the fact that Forge had a little more on the line. There was a lot more pressure on them. Yeah, definitely. That that for sure played you know played a role in, in the midfielders playing it safe. A lot of times you did see opportunities for those midfielders to go forward and take their space and create those attacking opportunities. But they felt that it was a lot safer to play back to their mm -hmm. center backs or perhaps their goalkeeper. So you did see that a lot, and, and it did really you know play into their poor performance within that first half. But they definitely did pick it up in that second half and, and were able to create a few more chances. Not to say that you know they had a few good chances in that first half, but it definitely wasn't their cleanest. All right, let's go down now and listen to Forge coach Bobby Smirniotis and get his thoughts on the match. Just your thoughts on the match from start to finish, your kind of summary? Yeah, two different halves. You know, the first 45 minutes, not good, uh, not terrible. We've actually created three very good chances, but uh, there was no flow to what we were doing. And uh, in the second half, uh, we decided as a team that we were going to do what we wanted to do for uh, the beginning of the match. But, uh, we were very good, very good on the ball and our movement, and uh, that created a lot more for us and allowed us to dictate uh, the play of the game. Yeah, so Bobby not thrilled with the first half either, and second half they, they really got going. Tristan Henry made a huge stop right before the end of the half, and that's one of those, you make a note of that one, because yeah. if that goes in, it changes yeah. the second half completely, but he makes a big stop. And then Forge was the better team um, in the second half. Uh, Malik scoring his first ever goal as a member of Forge, the, the center back. And um, he spoke post-match, but before we listen to him, Bobby talked about the fact that that header he scored off a set piece, and we'll talk more about set pieces uh, in a second. That's something he does a lot in practice, in training. Um, he gets up a lot. He, he's he Winning those battles in the air as a center back is are important, obviously. You think more so on the defensive side, but um, to be able to score goals as well. So here's Bobby talking about Malik's goal post-match. Yeah, with uh, Malik, uh, one thing's for sure, he uh, scores a lot in uh, in trading off of set pieces. He's the guy that picks up uh, everything, whether it's uh, the first ball, the second ball, the rebound. Um, he's got hunger for it, so it's, it's great that he's uh, gotten that goal. Um, you know, he's been an excellent player for us uh, this year. You know, he had a stretch uh, earlier on the scene, uh, in the season when he was playing and... Uh, doesn't matter who is healthy, he's not coming off the pitch. Had a little bit of an injury, kept him off. and uh, So it's a great reward for him. It's another young player uh, of ours who I think is doing fantastic work along with Kwesi Pope, who today has gotten his third start uh, um, in a row. And these guys have uh, been excellent. And uh, you know when we look at them, they're all of 19 and uh, 20 years old each. So Malik Olawabi Bellu with the uh, first goal for Forge. He spoke post-match. And Malik's mom actually played a pretty important role in this match. I'll let you listen. Um, I feel like it's been a, a long time coming. I had an opportunity kind of similar to that against Pacific at home uh, quite a few games back, and I wasn't able to capitalize on it. So when this one came up and it, it popped up to me, I like, tried to make sure I could do everything I could to put the ball in the back of the net. And then when I saw it go in, I was a bit uh, surprised at first. 
I think you can see that with um, just running around, not really knowing what to do. And then once it settled in, I was like, okay, yo, like, uh, I've scored my first pro goal. Let me, let me go celebrate with the team. And, and yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been with the squad. So um, going into the game, I was a little bit nervous. I spoke to my, my mom back home and she was saying, you know, imagine the feeling of, of scoring a goal and how that makes you feel and like use that to like motivate you in the game. And as cliche as it is, uh, goal came, so it was just like a great feeling. It was kind of like a full circle moment, I could say. But, but yeah, again, it's the first of many. I've been planning this in my head for a while. So <clears> when I got <throat> that opportunity and I finally settled in, I knew that okay, yeah, this is this is the celebration I wanted. You know, just for a young player like Malik, um, he's new to the league. He's new to the North American game. He played a lot of his uh, soccer in the UK. To get that goal. After he's been great defensively this season, but now you have a goal on under your belt. You're heading into the playoffs. It it just it all seems to be coming together, and and confidence is a huge thing for a young player. Yeah, definitely. You know, this is a big moment for him to be able to to get on the end of that and and finish it in a big moment, as you know today was. Forge needed that win, so it's an exhilarating moment for him. It was obviously a great finish. Um, he definitely needs to take this as a stepping stone and continue mm -hmm. to go forward with it. He knows his capabilities. You know, Bobby mentioned how great he is in training and and you know showing his ability so as long as he continues to do what he did today i think he's he's gonna be awesome mm -hmm. and that goal came off a set piece um, yes so did the second one so forge did get their second goal sissoko it was either a screamer or a banger there was a debate <laughs> about whether we should call it a screamer or a banger it was a beautiful goal we'll just put it at that and it, it was a poor clear by banger. york but a uh, banger yeah um <laughs> poor clearance by york but again off of a set piece um before we talk about that, let's go down to Bobby again, because th this is Bobby's talked about it a lot. Like he, he always says throw ins are the most important part of the game. And his point is that the details, the smaller things, anytime there's a chance and anytime you have possession, you, you want to do something with it. And in Forge's case, um, they like to take the ball short off the corner. And Bobby talked about that during his uh, post match media conference. If you uh, look at the uh I think everyone looks at the statistics and the coaches, so I'm not going to give away a, a secret here, Ed, but everyone really defends the box. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times uh, we can talk about set plays that get put into uh, into the area, but you're playing to a wall that's set up. Any movement, because uh, you can play a small touch, hit it in, it gets everyone to shift and move out of position. So we like to use them. We've scored directly uh, off direct quarter kicks. We've scored off these little combination and the short ones. Uh, we have players that can play football. You know, in a game, if you give somebody a 2v1 or a 3v2 situation on the wing, I think you go and you play there. So what's the difference with the corner? Yeah, so success off of the set pieces for, for Forge FC. And when you, you know, those are the details that Bobby talks about. And, you know, you were talking about it throughout the match. Sometimes these games come down to those details and set pieces are a big part of that yeah you know set pieces have the ability to change the entirety of the right. match so you know something as simple as a throw in like bobby's mentioned it if you're able to get that quick throw in when the back line is not set up you're able to perhaps get you know a scoring opportunity perhaps score off of it so there is a lot of opportunity off of set pieces mm -hmm. and you know bobby mentioned on the on the short corners it causes somebody to 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 be drawn out and it really does open up space and create hecticness within that box a lot of teams defend the box and it's very difficult to score off of you know a, a typical swing in um corner so yeah they had a lot of success tonight with the the corner kicks and mm -hmm. all the set pieces i would say you know throw-ins i believe could have been a little better a little cleaner but um yeah overall i would say that they play a massive role in, in changing the game and you know, today it changed the momentum of the game for Forge for sure. Yeah, and, and when they play the ball short, because, and Bobby talked about it, but a lot of teams in this league like to crowd the box with, with defenders, and they're essentially giving you a free pass. And teams, I would imagine in training, like in training, you are practicing how to defend some of these set pieces. But when the ball's taken short, all of that's thrown out the window because whatever you're training, now all of a sudden it's a little more chaotic and players kind of lose their man and things get, it's, it's more exploitable, I guess, for the attacking yeah. club. I mean, typically there is somebody that has that responsibility. They're, they're dealing with that short, but at the same time, you are obviously dropped into that 18. Um, you know, you have to be on the edge of it. So 
you're not getting out there quick enough sometimes. Right. You know, you saw that with the first the first goal. Borges was able to take his touch and and perfectly place it. You know, I do believe it possibly would have went in without the header, but it was a great finish. Not yeah. to say, you know, not to take away from that. Uh, Malika but, scored his first yeah, goal. Yeah, no, it from. was amazing. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but seriously, you know, it, he had the time on the ball. He was able to see that he was able to chip that keeper and um yeah so you know it does it does create hecticness for the defensive team to have to you know send somebody out and, and yeah just a lot of hecticness within that box yeah and then players aren't marked to the, the way they were initially um so it's an interesting setup now because forge have two matches remaining let's we'll try and get the math right here so forge are four points back of ottawa ottawa the one match left forge with two so forge is going to need ottawa to lose Ottawa's last match against York uh, this weekend at home. So York could play a big role in Forge getting that top seed if they can beat Ottawa and, and do Forge um, a favor. And like we saw, I mean, York still has plenty to, to play for. This is the kind of league, just it's the nature of it. There's always something to play for because these players, they're playing for their careers, for their livelihoods, for uh, if they have aspirations beyond the CPL. You never know who's watching, as I've said before. So there's always something to play for and it's the last match of the season this might be a player's last opportunity to, to right. showcase what they can do for next year so yeah the motivation has to be there regardless yeah absolutely you know whether you are making it into the playoffs you're fighting for a top you know two spot mm -hmm. for example as forge um, was tonight if they didn't get the win it would have been you know a massive upset in a sense york came here and yeah they're, they're playing for pride they're right. not they're not there's nothing really on the line for them mm -hmm. but at the same time as a player you know it's never it's never right to say that because you right. come out every day and you put your body on the line and and you're fighting for um you know yeah to make it to the next level or there's a lot of young players you know you see a lot of these 18 year olds and right. they're just at the beginning of their careers and they're fantastic players and they have a lot to prove so this is a perfect time for you know for example York, a team like York, they have a, a ton of great players um, that are young, that are able to showcase who they are yeah. for next season and are able to develop. Um, so yeah, I definitely think regardless of the position you're in, there's always there's always something to fight for. Yeah, it's not like these are athletes that have signed, you know, eight-year deals and are just trying to get through the last game without getting hurt for next season. It, right. They might be playing for a contract next season. So this is a big match for Ford, or for York, rather, and for Forge, because I'm sure they'll be watching because um, <laughs> the York-Ottawa match is on Saturday. Forge's final game is on Sunday against uh, Halifax. Mid-match, or excuse me, mid-week match for Forge against Pacific. That's Wednesday night. Um, I do want to throw down, though, to uh, Captain, it was uh, Dom Zador who, for York, and he spoke post-match about possibly being there to play spoiler and help Forge. They're not looking at it as helping Forge. I just want to throw that in there. They're not looking to help Forge at all. Um, but they are going to be playing to win that final match against uh, Ottawa. And... That's what Zador had to say. Yeah, it's always it's always nice to be one of the teams that can cause a little bit of chaos. So we're going to go in there and try to cause as much chaos as we can. Yeah, maybe disrupt Ottawa, their last uh, home game prior to the playoffs, uh, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So we're going to go in there, nothing to lose, everything to gain. So we're excited for that. And we've got one more game to play, uh, play and we're going we're gonna to bring everything to that game finish on a high and uh, there's still a lot to play for. There's everybody still trying to fight for contracts and things like that moving forward and just having a little bit of pride. Each game does matter. Um, so we're just looking forward to the next game now. All right. So York promises they're going to try and beat Ottawa, not for Forge or for the fans, for themselves. Definitely we'll, not for Forge. No, but we'll take we'll take it either way. Um, before we, we sign off, we, we can't, you know, Dominic Samuel was on it for his 100th match. David Chouanier played in his 100th match. He will be honored um, in, in one of the final two matches. I was able to catch up with David as he was leaving the field after the match. And uh, here's what he had to say. All right, it's a big achievement for me because uh, when you start playing professional, you, you look for continuity. You want to you wanna keep playing. You want to keep... Uh, I mean, if you reach 100 games because you're doing something good and you're healthy, you keep playing. So that's the goal and I want to keep going. All right, so congratulations to David Chouanier for hitting 100. Uh, one of, I don't know if I can keep track anymore, uh, Kyle Becker hit 100, Tristan Henry, Ashton Yodianson, Dominic Samuel, and now David Chouanier. So I think that's five. I'm not the greatest at math, but I believe that's five. So That was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. And yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> impressive for the club because these guys have been here. And um, 
Well, Bobby talked about it after the match. The fact that not just Avi, but these guys that have hit 100, it's more than just hitting a number because they've been contributing. They've, they've been through a lot, as Bobby will tell you, in moments because uh, they've been here for the two championships, the loss in the final. I mean, CONCACAF. Um, so he, here's Bobby post-match about David and all of his players that have hit 100. You know, with all of these guys, it's just tremendous. Eh? We're coming to the end of, uh, of four years, uh, and this means that these guys have been here for four years battling for this club. Um, they've been through, through everything, you know, through winning championships, through uh, being in difficult situations uh, in playing in CONCACAF away from home and pandemics, um, qualifying for, for Champions League, losing in a final, uh, losing a heartbreaker in the Dominican Republic uh, that I think made us better. But uh, if you look at uh, what these guys have done, who uh, I guess are part of this 100 uh, game club, they've been here right from the beginning and they've seen all the ups and the downs and a lot more ups. And these are the guys we lean on for all of these situations that we're coming forward to. So it's another uh, great achievement. David's been a fantastic player for us not only in league play, but in CONCACAF and all CONCACAF uh, competitions. He's been an absolute uh, gem uh, playing there, and he's a, a very important player for us. You see his contributions today and his, his work on that right wing. He's, he's been fantastic, and, you know, uh, whether it's here or it keeps on going, I, I hope he has another 100 in front of him. All right, so your final, again, from Tim Hortons Field here in Hamilton. 2 nothing in favor of Forge FC. They clinch. A playoff spot. I don't even know if I mentioned that at the <laughs> top, but it's because I'll tell you why. Forge will tell you over and over again. They have higher aspirations. Maybe they haven't said this, but I'll say it for them. I think making the playoffs was kind of their bare minimum in terms of goals this year. They have bigger goals for sure. So two more matches left, both at home. Wednesday against Pacific, Sunday against Halifax, and you're probably going to keep your eyes on that Saturday match between York and Ottawa. That's the match in review. I'm Jess Lisi. I'm Anthony Urcioli. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.